Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Silver Spurs Arena, home of the G League Osceola Magic. Get ready for some SEA action today between the Winter Park Storm and the Florida Flight. At this time, we ask that you please stand as we honor America with the presentation of our national anthem. <laughs>
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's introduce the starters for today's game. First, the starting five for the visitors of Winter Park Storm. A six-foot guard from the University of Montevallo, number 11, Ivan Smith. A six-foot guard from Bishop State and Santa Fe Community College, number 43, Aaron Thornton. A six-foot-three guard from Villa Maria College, wearing number six, Dominic Douglas. A six-foot-five center from Deltona High School, wearing number 52, Sean Sucker. And at six-foot-four forward, a six-foot-four forward from St. Croix Educational Complex, Wearing number seven, Terrell Christian. Now, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for your home team, the Florida Flight. Let's introduce our starters for the Florida Flight today. A five foot nine bar from the Army won 114th infantry. Number 21, Ronnie. Foot five guard from Palm Beach Atlantic University, wearing number 25, Frank Knight. A six foot four guard from North Georgia, number eight, Clarence C. T. A six foot three guard from St. Andrews, number 31, Michael Duncan. And at six foot six, a forward from Santiago Canyon College, number 77, Nicholas Choi. Our head coach is today, the Winter Park Storm in his second season, Brandon Parham. And head coach for the Florida Flight, Mark King. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lucas Miller. I'm joined here with Mr. Pat Burke at the Silver Spurs Arena for the Florida Flight versus the Winter Park Storm, the Florida Basketball Association. Again, today's March 30th, the day before Easter. <laughs> Got a good matchup between two great teams as both teams are starting this season. Flight coming off of a a rough season last year, and same thing with the Winter Park Storm. So let's see how both teams match up against each other today. We've got some new faces on the court. We've got some exciting FBA action. And I tell you, this is the beautiful arena. If you don't know it, and you're looking at this video for the first time on this live stream, this is where the Osceola Magic from the G League play. It's a, it's a beautiful facility. Yes, this is my, uh, my own team. My own team plays the Osceola Magic. I currently do stats for them and always go Magic. Love Orlando. The ball has been tipped now for the Winter Park Storm. And Dominique Douglas, the leading scorer of this team last season, goes up, gets fouled right off the bat. And uh, Lucas, that's what he does. Probably his, his best accolade in playing is he gets to the basket, but this guy gets to the free throw line. He yes. can make a career. <laughs> this guy could average 25 points a game and everything's on free throws. No, so. he's a flashy guard. And from what I saw of him last season, he does a lot around the ball. And he's a reliable scorer. He gets yeah. to where his spots are and knocks down those shots easy. And uh, it's always uh, fun to watch, Dominique. 17 seconds in, and he's already at the free throw line. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this in the, the last broadcast I was on. We uh, we had a wager on. Oh, my. Oh, wow. <laughs> I had to stop my thought there. Little, little mental error there on the uh, Florida flight, getting the ball down the floor. But anyways, we had a, we had a wager the last time we, uh, we had a game with the, the storm that uh, – Dominique Douglas and how many times he would get to the free throw line in the second half. Yes. Hand. Another nice basket for the Winter Park Storm. Yes, some game last season, I remember making the same bet 
about how many times he could get to the, the free throw in the fourth quarter. I think he got there like at least three or four times, something crazy like that. Nice tip ball right there. Number 11 for the Winter Park Storm. Coming off the ball, here's Dominique, his long range. No good, but Tillman, Clarence Tillman with that rebound. Ball blocked. Two times down the lane for Tillman, it's not working out. Jump ball. Good hustle by both teams. A couple weeks ago, I went to an exhibition game between the Florida Flight and the Daytona Beach Bandits, a new team for the FBA. And it was hosted at Clarence Tillman's gym where he trains uh, youth basketball. Oh, very cool. I was joined by my partner, Alana Green, and that was a lot of fun. Watched that, that game, and Tillman had a, had a game. I think he was the leading scorer for the I, fight. I hope he did because uh, it'd be a lot of pressure to your uh, <laughs> the, key, the people that you're training yeah. <laughs> to, to showcase the skills. Kind of like one of those surgical procedures in a hospital where you see the, uh, the head of uh, the staff is down there and you've got students looking from above. Yes. <laughs> Practice what you teach. That's what he told me. Practice what you teach. I love this early movement. Uh, with the uh, Florida flight with the ball. Uh, so much so, we see a, a shot clock. Away. Hey, the thought's there, the patience is there, because uh, it's very rare you see that or hear that horn go off in the FBA. Yes. But when it does, it's showing you that they're, they're showing their patience early on. It's a shot clock violation for the flight. Coach Mark King took his first team mandatory. And we were just watching the Florida Flight junior basketball team. And we saw some things that they definitely can improve on. And I wonder how Mark kind of transitions from coaching, you know, the youth basketball to now adult, you know, men's league. I wonder if there's a big difference. You know, do you think that there would be? Or you I, just I, yeah, I think one of the things you're going to see not only is it the age and skill set but it's the commitment level like i think that uh this this older group practices a lot more I'm sure so of course they, they've had the ability to overcome a lot of the things that he puts together as far as their defensive schemes offense so i'd say that he's going to be a little more um how would i say he's technical a little less technical as far as expectations of in course. it but also he's going to have that, that comfort that his team is going to perform. Again, is the younger guys, they're on their journey. We talked about that before. But I think I say with these guys, it's more more comfortable because they're around each other more. Yeah, and these are, these are experienced players. I mean, you have people from the D2 to D1 level. I remember last, last season I saw a couple players from, from D1. So these are players that, that know the game. They've been around the game at a high level. Dominique Douglas again getting to his spot. Back to the top of the key, back to Douglas. Takes his shot. Just off, but. Ooh, rush shot there. I like that play. If you saw that, they, they ran a little weave up top and they got a, an isolation with Douglas and uh, the Florida Flight big man. That's a nice bucket there. The QB1 pass was intercepted at the other coast. Nice pass inside, but back to Tillman. Uh, and they call the travel. Tillman is, is definitely uh, showcasing that he wants to attack that basket. You know, of course. On. And so, uh, I guess his feet got a little quick on him. Let's see if we see this isolation again. Oh. Offensive foul called on the Winter Park Storm. These two teams, though, they're no strangers. They, they've played, you know, a while here in the FBA. A lot of these players know each other's game. So For sure. you're going you're gonna to see a lot of them playing to the sides of the referees, knowing what each player is going to do as well. First pass is broken up. Douglas now with the ball. Back out. Fade away. No good, but the rebound goes for the flight. Who 
looking for some sort of offensive scheme. Pass inside to number 77. Ooh. Nice block there by number seven. Terrell Christian. Mark King looking for a goal 10. He's not going to get it. Planted the foot, but back out to Douglas. His shot. Just short. Another long range pass. We know the FBA is uh, is also known for its, its high pace. So you're going to see a lot of these long passes. And, you know, in the preseason when they were playing, I noticed that there could be some sloppy plays. But I, I want to see now here as we start this season, we're in the regular season play, are they starting to recognize that they're taking care of the ball and making more safe passes? Nice pressure, Tillman. Good Tillman, yeah. Forcing that shot. And they called the foul against Tillman. It's a lot of real estate. When Tillman puts that pressure all the way up at the ball at the half court, if that guy gets by him, that's a lot of space for the uh, the other guys in his team to make decisions. And again, we talked about even with the early game with the young kids, is if you're going to speed things up, communication and understanding where to go is really valuable in those in those moments. Little two-man weave there. Looking for oh, something. Love watching the uh, the storm right now. They've got a, a lot of good defensive pressure in that lane. Another long-range pass. Found his receiver. Ball just spins out. Again, those long-range passes are so difficult. Very, very risky to try and make that shot from the other end of the coast. And here comes the Winter Park Storm. Good finish around speed the basket. Is, speed is uh, it's finding its way into the game, and we're going to see which team is going to use it as their uh, benefiting factor. You know, it looks like the Florida Flighters are slowing the game down a little bit, more tactical, but you are hearing Coach Mark King on the sideline telling his guys to speed it up. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Hello. <laughs> An alley oop to himself. It's a nice play. What a lovely play there by number 25, Grant Gullet. It's a nice bucket there. Oh. They call foul a of, on. A lot of Florida flights questioning that, but uh, they've got to find some composure here. Again, it's great dunk on one side, propels the momentum, gets guys excited, but you can't have that dictate what you're doing with your hands and your feet on defense because, again, the Florida flight, or I'm sorry, the FBA reps know that this can get out of hand. These guys are competitive, <laughs> yes. so they're not going to let this stuff start to sway and all of a sudden get these guys into an argument. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is start something, especially at this level where it's just not needed, not needed for the game. Oh, I, I, not a big fan of that play right there. There was four Florida flights in the same area, creating a, a little too much traffic. But gr great easy play by the, um, the flight. Pass was almost a hair strong at the other end just there. With the flight converted and got a nice bucket under the basket. There's Douglas once again. Nice cut. Wide open shot. No good for the flight. Good communication right there <laughs> under the basket. Dominic Douglas back at the basket again. Great pass. Full court pressure here. Uh, being put on the ball from the storm. Right on the basket, and just another costly turnover there. Good hands. That's Gullet again. 
Driving inside, and that's a whistle there. Oh. Does it seem early on for the Florida foul. flight that it's like positive is also matched with some sort of call on the foul? And I'm not saying it's just emotions, but it's just like one thing that's good's happening, and then all of a sudden something happens on the other end that's not so good. No, I, I'm, I'm recognizing the same thing that you're picking up. I see that it's almost like they, for lack of better terms, get sloppy when something does go correct. Good call. Good call, Mark King. <laughs> Mark King got that call for his team. He makes about three calls a game. <laughs> It's a nice free throw shot right there for number 21, Burr. He went to the Army 114 Infantry. That was his, uh, that was his branch of service. Ball now back inbounded with 25. Directing traffic again. Just about five seconds left on this shot. Foul call, and that's an and one play. I tell you, Suckup has, has got size in the form of height, but knowing as a big man, it's very hard to be isolated with somebody who's quick with the ball because you're going to be tested on your lateral quickness. Clock moves down, the pressure moves on, and again, he's showing that he, he fouls him, and uh, it didn't work out in his favor. Missed a free throw, and ball back for the Winter Park Storm. Good stop you play right there for the flight. Again, both teams are playing with their own pace which you like to see because the last thing you want to do is get sucked into the other team's space. Yeah. Have to, you know, adjust to a style of basketball that your team isn't used to. And the flight and the storm have both done a great job of making sure that they're playing their style of basketball. Pass inside. Nice, nice little, little unexpected little uh, right-hand hook shot there. Hey, if it's broke, do not fix it. If it's not broke, do not fix it. Nice cut. Nice little wow. give and go right there. Terrell Christian with a great pass on that side for the storm. You like a big man who can also identify when, uh, when to make the pass down low. Long range three, no good. There's Tillman. Still has the ball and nice, made it up. Strong finish. Got out of trouble there. Going right into two defenders, but then uh, some good, good footwork. You get a spin move to get away from it and uh, finish that basket. Surprise! there was no whistle called. That's the flight come down with this ball, but trapped is Tillman. Right there under the basket. Nice bucket there. It's an even game, even matchup between both, both teams, 15 to 14. I think the flight are up one right now. Just about two and a half minutes left in this first quarter. Here's Dominique, he drives inside. And one. Surpr surprising on that play right there, the Storm have a, a screen up top with two guards. And what I recognize is the, uh, the Florida flight never created any type of switch or change or stay with your guy. And, uh, of course, you know, Dominique gets all the way to the, um, to the basket like he does. But, you know, the Florida flight got to realize that's, that's almost the Storm's bread and butter. And they've got to have it already prepared to say, are we switching or are we, what are we doing on those screens? Three-point play is completed as Douglas knocks down the hardest, easiest shot in the game of basketball. Uh-oh. 
Nothing there. Under the Keep basket. it simple. Keep it simple. The uh, the Florida Flight have got some uh, some new guys in. It looks like they've uh, they've got some height uh, that's come into this uh, this new look. Here's that same play we saw. Same play we saw a little while ago with the Florida Flight recognizing there are two guards up top. So you can either switch this or you can play it through. But you know the reality is, is it's not an isolation to change from a big to a little or to get to get some sort of uh, improvement on it. But I'm I'm shocked there that they're uh, they're fouling on that. Some questions there at the uh, at the timetable with Mark King going up and asking about is that the correct score? And uh, I tell you this, the FBA fans and teams will let you know if it's off. I'm not sure exactly what the score is. If there was a uh, an email or something on top of this computer screen that you could call in or text <laughs> or email, it would be lighting up. So I think I know. Layup off the glass, no good. Dominique racing to the other coast, finds his man. Nice play. I like to jump into the contact. I know, I know that he, he probably, you know, purposely threw that shoulder in just to try and, just to try and uh, get that foul called. I was surprised Dominique Douglas gave it up, but when he did, too. he came down. He's waiting for that commitment because mm -hmm. everybody knows he makes it to the basket. But exactly. when he got the defender, he w he moved it over to his teammate. I tell you, Javon Knight had, uh, like you said, a little hesitation. Got his defender in the air, threw the foul. That's a veteran play. Still some questions here from uh, Mark King on the on the scoreboard. Both teams right now are trying to figure out. This is what I love with the Florida fight. They're two trying to figure meeting. out. Most of the time they don't allow the coaches to talk, but uh, these two are figuring out like family. They're trying to figure out exactly what the score is. Again, right now we're having a little bit of a delay because both teams are trying to figure out exactly what the score is. But they're still uh, they're still talking this out, but the game is gonna go on. Ooh, nice play right there. Like that, number 88, Paul stepping up on an un unexpected play by uh, Douglas, not realizing that uh, Paul was there. Got a little travel. Ball now in. Score is 18 17. The Storm lead by one. Long range. No good. Shot looked good. Don't now inside. It. Top of the key. He drives inside his lay. Ooh. And it's good. Crafty little play there by Paul. All the defenders glued to their uh, to their guys, and he just came in there and put a little layup in. That was a tough bucket for Bulb. Top of the key now. Cross dish out. Checking for the three. No, no good. Most of these three pointers have have looked online. Just. Just a hair short. It's got to be that NBA line. Sam Thurl, shot's no good. I'm a little shocked the Storm aren't uh, trying to drive on these bigger guys for the flight and draw fouls. That's another costly turnover for the Storm as the flight lead now by one. Bulb, shot's just a bit strong. Ooh. Big man 15, Kashan Kapoor got fouled right under the basket there. He had a little uh, questionable hop there after he got the ball. That's, I thought they were going to call it travel. Yeah, I thought they called they travel, to be honest, but they did not. Hey, but, you know, I've seen worse things. I've seen worse.
calls not been or been missed. The four is like a giant up old six six. Is a, one of the biggest guys on the uh, Florida flight. Four sinks a second. Just about seven seconds left in this first. There's Douglas. That's a turnover there. Half a second left. His Shots wow. no good. And that takes us to the end of the first quarter. Yeah, it's action packed. There's a little uncharacteristic there of uh, Dominique Douglas there at the end. You know that the, the storm is going to go to him for that last shot, but it uh, turns it over and it, it goes down to a quick shot that uh, action filled for the Florida fight, even though they missed it. So, hey, what are you seeing? <laughs> I mean, I'm seeing a lot. I'm seeing a lot. It's definitely a. Uh, a better game than we saw before from the exhibition game that I went to between the Florida Flight and the, and the Bandits. This is a more refined flight team. They have a, a better sense of identity, which of course I, I would expect because it's been about a month or so since that game. So they've had time to, do, uh, to develop and to go over what they need to go over. I like how the Storm has been communicating and com uh, passing the ball around. I think they have done a better job with securing the ball, even though both teams have been giving up costly turnovers left and right. I could be wrong. Honestly, they might have more turnovers than, than the flight, but. That's the best thing about the FBA. We don't have the uh, yeah, box we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> but uh, it's a good matchup. It's a good matchup. It's between two really talented teams, and the score is almost even, 2018. The flight are up two. Leading into the second quarter, we're looking from we're looking towards both teams' head coaches to see how they're going to direct their team for the last part of this first half. Second quarter action. Uh, Mark King still going with this uh, the second crew here. A little bit taller roster. Maybe he's thinking uh, more rebounds, more. Uh, more of a, a larger stature in the lane for defensive pressure. But uh, on the offensive end, let's see what it looks like. Bulb. Barely misses the N1. He'll be shooting two. Going up to the free throw line. But the bright yellow shoes. You can tell who that is just by the shoes. It's got to be the shoes. Got them lemon heads on. a little short. Again, like what we were talking about last game, the hardest, easiest shot in basketball. <laughs> Free throws. The ball never lies. Florida flight in the zone. Looks like... Uh, they're extending it a lot too, playing a little higher than you would think. Douglas history, no good. Pull up jumper for the storm for the second attempt, no good. Uh, Fighting for the ball. Good it, defense right there. If I looked at these two teams on paper and just with the height, I would think to myself, this is what the storm is going to do on defense is they're going to put a lot of pressure because of their speed and offense. I think the same thing, even though. Florida Flight's trying to play this zone. These these guards are going to make it to the basket. Oh, a little foul there. A little foul there on the other side of the corner that was shot on. The Storm aren't careful. They're definitely going to end up in the bonus sometime soon. I think FBA rules is six team fouls equates to the bonus. I think that's how the FBA rules run, but... Fan, the fans want to see their players in. They don't want to. They don't want anybody cutting their day short. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Long 
Long range. No good. I think an unsung hero for the for the storm is number 52. Suck up. Yeah, yes. I, I think that uh, the storm is trying to match that uh, height presence with suck up. He's very good around the basket. Seen him? Uh, do you seen him in post play? But he's also you know, he's good around that three point line as well. That's a sack right there for the four to fight at defensive three seconds. Yeah, back to suck up. He's got that that unk aura around him. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's got that uh, that old head. You know, he knows how to play ball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he knows the the fundamentals of the game, and that's that's the type of guy any team could yeah. could, could find valuable. He's getting he's getting dunks without jumping. He's getting rebounds without jumping. It's he's it's just good. Just figured out another another level. That's a travel violation called against the Storm and the flight ball. New face for the flight is uh, Nacho Padilla, number 11. What a wonderful nickname with Nacho. Good cross right there. Nice play. Oh. Nice lovely little mid-range game there by uh, Tyler. It's a lovely move right there. Ball now in. Good offense there for the Winter Park. Bulbs, no good. Nice second effort there by Tyler Rodriguez. Got shot it. ball, or the shot clock did not reset that rebound. I think that actually works in the uh, flight's favor to have it slow down a little bit. I agree. I do like uh, Tyler Rodriguez's effort right now. Second chance points. Uh, you know, he's, he's got a shot underneath him there. That he made nice little mid-range game. So let's see if uh, he can continue that. Ball now in. Calling his man. That's a long range, <laughs> and it's splash. There he goes. There's number one, Tyler Rodriguez. Got a little technical technicality over here with the uh, the shot clock, so we had to pause the game. Scores 26 to 20 as the flight starts to pull away from the Winter Park Storm. Oh, little. Misread communication there. Oh, that's just layup, no good. Florida flight couldn't maximize on that. Oh, got another technicality with the shot clock. I tell you, in between the two games that we said, there was a, a moment where uh, the clock next to me here fell on the ground, not by my doing. <laughs> I hope not, Mr. Pat. <laughs> I didn't sneeze or get up and bump it or anything. Again, shot clock and uh, equipment malfunctions. It's just a, it's a nasty way to delay the game. Sometimes it's nobody's fault, you know, it's just the equipment. Oh, this is, this is one of the first uh, communications I've seen in this league, but uh, I, I noticed right away uh, Josh Shane, number 30 for the Storm. He has great energy. He, uh, he came in and just started putting really aggressive full court pressure on the ball. And uh, he's already here. He's talking to his guys on the other end of the floor about what they're setting up. Look at this. Nice oh. block by Sam Farrell. What a foul. The architect of that, though, I'm telling you, is Josh Shane. He was, he, he was calling out something as a diversion, saying it was a three-point shot, but he knew he was going back door. Draw Christian could have... Uh, 
could have created a poster there if you want. He could have. I, w I would have asked it yeah. to be signed yeah. after the game. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a lovely block. You make him – I like – I like – there are certain fouls where you don't want to give him an easy basket. So I like I like the fact that, you know, you may foul intentionally or something like that to make him work for the points, you know, because, like, in this situation, only one point was scored instead of two. Long range was no good. Coming on the other end here. Dish back out. Here's zero. And it's good. Nice shot by Pickens. He is sitting out there waiting for those shots, and it looks like Florida Flight's just forgetting about him or just uh, undermanned on the defensive end on that transition. The Storm are starting to uh, gain a little momentum after that three. They only got about four seconds left on the shot. And that's a shot clock violation. We have seen a couple so far this game against the Florida Flight. Mark King and a couple of guys on the bench were calling that out, trying to put together a, an insurance policy for their guys to know when to take <laughs> that shot. Ball now back in for the Storm. Here's his turnaround shot, just a bit short. It's one of the uh, first post-up moves I've seen Long range, no good. Ooh. Tyler Rodriguez, he does have a very nice jump shot though. His, uh, his form and everything is very smooth. Timeout call for the Storm after a flashy but not executed pass. Mr. Burke, what are you seeing? What do you think you're seeing between both teams? I see that uh, the Florida flight is relying a lot right now on the bench players again, and they're making an impact. We've seen, you know, Tyler Rodriguez hit those shots, little mid-range game. I'm wondering when when do we start to see that transition of putting back in Tillman and some of the starters to come back in here? Because the longer you keep them on ice, it's very hard to get those guys to get back in. Or maybe he's sending a message. So that's that's kind of where I'm at with uh, just looking at the Florida flight. I agree. Not keeping a player warm can be detrimental, especially to their their game overall. And one thing I think that makes a, a good coach great is when they call timeouts. And I think I think that was a good timeout called for Winter Park, just because they were starting to pull away. And now they're kind of coming back a little bit, but now the momentum has kind of shifted. It's, it hasn't set in with one team in specific. So hopefully coming out of this timeout, time I think the Winter Park Storm are looking to take back the reins a little bit. I agree. You know, I'll, I'll add this. One of my observations in this is one of my favorite coaches is Greg Popovich. And when Greg Popovich calls a timeout, he moves about 20 feet away from the, from the, the bench and all the players coming off. And he's sitting there and he has counsel with the assistants. And uh, they're figuring out, what do you see? What do you see? Because nobody wants to be a silo unto their own answers. And in the FBA, it's very challenging because you see a lot of coaches are taking the helm of this role by themselves. So they have to make their own decisions instead of actually seeing you know, more eyes, more ears of experiencing you know, what, what's the most important thing to take care of. A long range from, from Rodriguez. And it's good. Nice. That's his second of the night. Yeah, you can see range. when Tyler Rodriguez, he's one of those emotional players. When he starts knocking those down, you can see that uh, if that thing starts to heat up a little bit, this whole place is going to erupt. Nice Euro. And that's good for Burr. Lovely finish nice around play the by basket. Burr. Don't let the size fool you. Little Euro step. <laughs> little bring the ball over. And the flight have seemed to have taken back this game. Back out. Here's Rodriguez. And <laughs> it's good. It's this is smooth. what I think you call a timeout. It's smooth. I think, I, I think you call another timeout. I'm going to be so honest there. They now pulled away. That's that's two three-pointers within the next within the last two minutes. 
It's been my experience that uh, 10 points is your is your space of recovery. So if, there is some bleeding going on right now. Yes. But if it gets past that 10 point marker, I think then you're in trouble. So uh, there we go. Josh Shane uh, closing that back into eight points. So again, it's always doable, especially in today's basketball, where you know no lead is safe. Now that the three point shot is such a valuable and, and used shot, that that 10 point lead can get you know cut down to just four in, in two shots. And the number of players on the court that shoot it. Yes. You know, yes. we watched last night with the Osceola uh, Magic. They're playing a five out at times or a four out one in <laughs> offensive set. And that means that you've got guys that not only can dribble the ball, but they can shoot from that side. And that's five guys. So it's it puts a lot of pressure on the other team to defend it and figure out what they can and can't do. All because of Steph Curry. <laughs> yeah. A nice hit right there for the winter park storm. 34-30 as the flight lead now by just four. That's a quick change when we talked about that 10 point. Exactly, and we just space. talked about it like 30 seconds ago. <laughs> about five minutes left in this first half of play. Great great uh, coaching over there by Coach Barham to not call that uh, timeout and burn one. His, uh, his team has recovered in it well. Some subs coming in. Here's Duncans and Tillman back out for the flight. And Dominique Douglas as well. Some starters back on the on the court. Long range. Shots no good, but almost. Good rebound there. Nice. Nice hit there by Josh. Josh Shane is maximizing these minutes. It didn't get any, I don't think he got any burn in the first quarter in the first half, but he's he's doing really well. Costly turnover there for the flight. Back out, here's Josh. Shots off. But their second attempt now. A nice lay. And the... The once 10 point lead has now been cut down to two for the flight. Just about four minutes left. Here's Rodriguez. Ball back out. No look past the top of the key. Drives inside. <coughs> Foul called against Duncans as the lay inside was just a bit too physical for that. Yeah, Duncan doesn't uh, ask him that question. Like, you know, what, what occurred there? I think just enough, just enough to get the foul call. I think it was at the very end where he, when he jumped up and he had his hands up, he kind of leaned it forward a broke little bit. Broke the plane, yeah. Yeah, he broke that. That threshold, which, which reaches into foul territory, yeah. you know what I mean? There's something about uh, when you when you try to when you try to tell your body that the rules are to go straight up, <laughs> but then when somebody hits you in the abdominals or they hit you yes. in the jewels, you're gonna, you're gonna break that. Get a crunch. <laughs> <laughs> Those arms are gonna drop. Yes. Free throw is good there for number 43. Again, now just a one point lead. Again, no lead is safe here in the FBA, and here comes Burr. Dishes back out, long range from seven, no good. Another long pass. Nice bucket with just two bodies on the floor. Here's Tillman's first touches of the second quarter. Oh, a lovely matchup between these two leaders of the team. 10 seconds left on the shot. The cross is oh. broken up. The flight looking to inbound and just get a shot. A double clutch shot. Oh. 
Gullet's going to get that shot off. He's a strong guy. But uh, right then, again, it's uh, I'm surprised to see that they didn't call something that they, you know, they're setting a screen for someone to get a, to get a shot. They're just working on muscle to, to get that shot. That was an awesome pass by Josh, or Mr. Shane, I'm sorry. Shane, Josh Shane. Nice bounce pass under the hoop, but couldn't deliver. Here's Burr. Fouled on his jump. Way to draw it. Ronnie Burr did a great job there setting that up. Got three defensive players that have kind of collapsed on him. Mark King asking for a timeout. It's funny, we've seen a bunch of different looks from the Florida flight. We've seen them go big, you know. Well, let's start in the beginning. We see that first the starting lineup was a lot of athleticism. We control the ball by uh, Ronnie Burr at the point guard playmaker. And then we start to see a big man group go in there. So they're relying a little bit more on trying to get the ball in the post, getting rebounds and shooting threes. But now we're we're warming up to a kind of a hybrid into it. We've got uh, some height in there and some of the starters in there now. I think it shows a good trait of a team where you can play it at different styles in an efficient way. Yeah. Now, you know, if it's not efficient, then it's not good. I'd say stick to just your one primary style. But I think the flight are doing a good job kind of adapting to the defenses that the Storm have been throwing at them and vice versa. I think the Storm have been doing an amazing job finding their open man and passing the ball around. And so score is 36-37. Winter Park Storm now lead by just one. Just about two and a half minutes left in this first half of play. And uh, again, we're here here at the uh, Silver Spurs Arena, the Osceola Magic home court. And my name is Lucas Miller. I'm joined here by Mr. Pat Burke. We're back now with Burr shooting his two free throws. First one is no good. If you don't know, Ronnie Burr's got a uh, military background, and uh, it's evident when you saw coming out of that timeout. He was uh, he was holding court there. He, communication is key. He had his guys around him talking yes. about what they were going to do. Tie game now with just about two minutes. Trapped heavily now. Ball out. Wow. And that's a storm ball. Uh, who was uh, who's the master maestro of that whole little player there? Your guy, uh, uh, Suckup, you were talking about before. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a veteran. He's not going to get called into one of those fouls, even with bigger, stronger players. We had a little slip over there on the other end by Tillman. Same area that uh, <laughs> the other Florida flight player that last game. What did these chairs do to these people? I'm not sure, but they definitely seem to be hard to set up. Looking for a shot now. No good. Ronnie Williams with great court vision there. Those two have a connection for sure. Flight began to pull away with just about a minute left in this first half. Got some momentum going. You know, again, we, we, in my experience, when you're, when you're defending a team like this, 
and a guy like Ronnie Williams throw that half court uh, pass behind you for uh, an alley oop. It does something to you. You know, you tell, tell your guys, hey, we got, we got to be guarding what's what's behind yes. us as well. Yes. Forces away, but ball loose. Looking for a long range here. Suck up. Oh. This pass is broken up. That that was a little bit of a football player move yeah. right there for that interception. Oh, that's a hand one play by Grant Gullett right under the basket. The flight have all the momentum going into this halftime. Pulling away 43 to 37 as Gauntlet gets John his Edwards, that and was, uh, one. Impressive. Again, that was a football player move. Here's Shane. And that's a line. Seems like everything that could go right is going right for the Florida flight. Yeah, I think uh, Aaron Farrington knew he was already going to make that move before he caught the ball. Williams, his long range, <laughs> and it's nice. good. That's almost the same distance you do the alley of pass from. <laughs> That's crazy. And that is the end of the first half. That first half. Florida flight pulled away 46 to 37. Wow, what a first half between two great teams here in the Florida Basketball Association. The flight seemed to have pulled away. There's a, there's a dispute here about something that's happened as far as uh, in the FBA rules, it looks like. Coach Brandon Parham going up and uh, talking to the refs, questioning uh, a part. We'll give you more information when we find out more. All right, well, we'll figure out and we'll say what's going on after this halftime, about 10 minutes. So we'll catch you guys back in just a little bit. Yeah, but 
ladies and gentlemen. Please make sure to join us for our next regular season SBA game Saturday, April 20th at 12.30 p.m. at Simpson Park Community Center in Lakeland as the Polk County Royals host the Florida Flight. That Saturday, April 20th, 12.30 p.m. tip-off at Simpson Park Community Center in Lakeland, Florida. Get ready for second half SBA action here at Silver Spurs Arena. Our halftime score, the Florida Flight 46, Winter Park Storm 37. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Silver Spurs Arena here March 30th, FBA game between the Florida Flight and the Winter Park Storm. My name is Lucas Miller, joined here with Mr. Pat Burke as we embark on the second half of a close game, though the flight began to pull away before the end of the first half, 46-37. Great defense there by Suckup. I like that call right there, trying to start out getting uh, Nicholas Choi uh, the opportunity to get started. There's Tillman working the ball now. The Duncans now. Underside. Tough turnover there for the flight. Long range, <laughs> and it's good. Two, uh, two successful visits there on this side for the, the Storm are starting off this half well. Florida is really, or the flight's really looking to, to get on this right side of the court. As I say, they switch it over to the other yes. side. Yes. <laughs> About eight seconds left on the shot. And that's a foul called right there against the storm. There was no shot. They were going to get a turnover because of the shot clock, but luckily got fouled. Yeah. I get this feeling, though, that uh, the Florida flight coming out of this timeout was saying, you know, let's establish 
Nicholas Joy there in, in the post. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's not there. <laughs> but uh, they've gone down three times <laughs> now. They keep trying to get it in there. It's like going, you know what, you know, we, we can change to some other. You'd have some things. spacing. I don't think the referee's admiring uh, my free throw shooter's shoes. <laughs> might have some blood. There might be some blood, yes. Yeah. Yeah, Grant Gullett plays so hard, and, uh, and I'm sure he's got a, a number of bruises and nicks all over his body, but uh, the referee noticing it, and there's protocols here in the FBA, and yes. uh, you got to make sure that you take care of that. Let me mention this because I haven't had a chance to. The Storm, very nice uniforms. Yes. And uh, one of the things, they have a, com a commemorative patch on their jersey for uh, the, the, I'd say the, the initial coach for the, the Winter Park Storm, Barry Mistel, who, who passed away this past year. And uh, this team has looked to honor him this season, and they'll continue to do that. If, you, if you've noticed and watching, even when they come out of timeouts or any type of huddle, they do have a chant that they say for Coach Mustel, and they have uh, they talk about him all the time because he was very impactful, not only for this team, but teams in the past. He's been around a lot of players and helped a lot of them through their journey with the with this sport that we love called basketball. So I awesome. just wanted to make sure that we, we recognize Barry Mustel and, and appreciate everything that he did for everyone. That's awesome. It looks like Gullet got patched up and we should return to his second free throw. I don't know if the flight was charged that timeout or if that was a ref timeout. Mm, that's an interesting question. You know, it's like, a, I, think that, sure. I think that is a referee one because you, know, you, you, you can't, I mean, he got fouled. It's sure. his fault, he's bleeding. Sure, so. yeah. Second free throw is no good as Suckup gets the rebound. Now here's an interesting player with the ball, Ivan Smith. He played with the Lakeland Royals, now Polk County Royals, last year. And had a really good season in my opinion. I think he did about as good a job as he could have. I think he joined a little later, so he didn't play all of the regular season games. But definitely contributed to the, a lot of their late let late season success. You've, you've been around this league a bit. Is that something that uh, is familiar within uh, the FBA? Is a lot of team, a lot of players who you know, may have had the opportunity to switch teams and, and uh, you know get on different rosters. For sure, I've definitely seen a couple a couple players uh, join other teams or you know go to teams that may fit fit them better. I think one of the most notable, uh, I, I guess for lack of better terms, free agent signings <laughs> could be uh, Mr. Enrique Bush for the uh, Claremont Crocs joined the Serpents this year. And the Serpents beat his team in the semifinals last year in the playoffs. So that was a very interesting uh, move there. Kevin Durant-esque move. For sure. Double looks like they're playing that horn set. Two screens up top. Let's see if uh, Gullet can maximize on that. Look at a, look at a foul on the floor. Suck up to that foul. You know, a lot of people don't realize this, this play is, and this is a big word that they're using this, you can't impede the progress of the ball handler as they're attacking. So if you're in front of them, even though you're going backwards and you're going slower than the guy who's moving, you're actually creating a foul. I used to get called for that a lot, so I had to question that. It's a very interesting uh, way to look at it. I I've never thought about it. Tillman's long range no good, but... Winter Park ends up with that ball. Now on the right side, here's Dominique's first long. No good. 
Duncan's grabbed that. A little oh bit of goodness. a miscommunication. We saw that play, something similar in the very first play of the game after the jump ball, where uh, you're, you're trying to get that fast break going and you just make passes and uh, people don't have their heads turned because a lot of times the, the responsibility of a really good playmaker is everybody sitting there realizing, hey, you can take care of the ball, but they don't have the responsibility to say, hey, sometimes I need your help. You gotta exactly. Yeah, being the director of traffic is very, um, a lot, of, a lot of responsibility in that role, especially in basketball. And I think because basketball is such a communicated sport, when there is no communication, good, good tip there. Yeah. Good tip there, for sure. Good tip. Any team, I would say this, is any team that's successful and they're not communicating has been together a long time. Yes. It's almost like uh, a family member, and you already know what they're thinking, what's for dinner, what they, you know, this, that, and the other. But when you see, like we saw in the, the earlier game, when you see teams that are not, there's youth there in the, the realization that they don't know how effective it can be. Long range three by Ronnie Williams, the veteran for the team. Smith's shot's no good. It's Tillman box out well. Here he comes on the other coast. Oh. Ball, right, ball lands right back in Smith's hand. Again, what we were talking about earlier, there are certain fouls where, certain fouls where that was a good foul. Make him work for that, those two points instead of giving him an easy layup, you know? Yeah. I mean, obviously don't injure him. Don't do anything extreme, but that was a good foul. We, for sure. We, yeah, you recognize that in the uh, the younger game in high school is a lot of guys will go up with the intention of they're going to block a shot. Yes. And there's not many shot blockers in the game. So the next thing is is you don't want to give them the ability to get to the free throw line, but you don't want to hurt them. So you got to realize you got to yes. take in a foul that's on the floor before the shot's being taken place. And a lot of kids, because of emotions, don't realize that it takes a while. So you see a lot of coaches on the sideline screaming. <laughs> nice scissor step there for Williams. At the right wing now, trying to find something going on. He drives inside, dish back out. Now to Duncan's. First oh. shot's no, no good, but his second is. Suck up. Now Williams. Uh, it's a foul on Williams. Questionable call there. You know, Ronnie Williams is a very strong player, and uh, sometimes it's deceptive. Is when he's sitting there and he's holding his ground, someone tries to make a spin move on him and he's not moving. It'll look as if he's done something, but the reality is he's just holding his ground. Yes. Winter Park called that timeout, and now we got about seven and a half minutes left in this third quarter of play. Scores 52-50 with a flight lead now by two. Again, both teams just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Not playing as fast as they were in the first half, for sure. And I like, but I like the pace that we are moving at. I like the pace that both teams are holding. It seems like both teams know exactly where they want to go, what, what shots they want to take. And we're having a, a better, more efficient basketball game now. I don't know if they're all the shots that uh, Mark King and uh, <laughs> Brandon Barham are, are drawing up. Yes. Because it's like there's who you want your team to be, and then there's the reality of who they are. Yes. And uh, you start to see that even in even in the stat sheets and box scores, that's the team. Like, yeah. like here we are in the beginning of the season. You know, we get in the midway, we're going to know what's the signature of this team. You know, who are our scoring? How do we score? And no matter what you want to draw up there, you got to realize like that's that's really sharing like like the facts of, of where your your guys are. Ball 
in play now. Here's Douglas. His shot is blocked. Yeah. But they call the goaltending on Grant Gullet. It's intimidating, though. You know, even though if that basket was still going to go in, you, I think you'd still want to have somebody up there looking and blocking that because those guys are going to be looking for him in the lane when they try to take their shots. That's and if, if you got anybody second guessing like that, that's a great play. No, that's a 50 50 call. I think that all depends on who's watching. I personally didn't see the ball start to fall, but I could be wrong. I'm not a referee. <clears throat> Good shot block, but a foul called right there against the Storm. Like that. I, I think uh, Duncan might have gotten blocked wow, though, on, a, on a pump fake. Zero Pickens checks in for the storm. Adds good spacing to the team. Hit a couple threes last last half. Duncan makes his second. His signature shot is that corner one. He does very yes. well at getting there quick. Look, he's getting ready already. <laughs> Shot knocked out of bounds, and that's a stoppage. You hear this a lot with uh, when you're playing zones. They say sometimes the, the success in zones is when the offense attacks negative space, meaning the space where there is no defender. And for the guy like Pickens, he finds that negative space where there's nobody at. And he just did it right there where he's kind of deceptively getting behind the defense. And uh, some players are very good at it. Got fouled on the way up, and now the... Storm is going to travel to the foul line. <laughs> I, li I like Rodriguez that. Rodriguez is asking uh, Pickens, <laughs> did I foul you? I'd say that we, that gets kind of irritating with the, uh, the referees once they've... Uh, you know, they've studied the game, they're making their calls, they're looking to put together a professional performance, and then two players are orchestrating. Yes. <laughs> what did you feel? And if it goes against their call, it's probably not going to do any good for uh, exactly. Rodriguez later on. Scores now tied with those free throws. 54-54. Just about six and a half minutes left. Duncan's now getting his, getting his screen. Rodriguez, his long. Just short, but a good put back there by number seven, Edwards. Wow. Nice and one play right there for the Storm. Number one, Rodriguez again drew another foul. Here's Bulb now. Shot blocked heavily by the Storm. Now on the other end. Offense just, just short. Here's Tillman now. Oh. Tillman just too strong. Lovely offensive scheme there for the flight. Interception again for the flight. Trapped heavily is Bulb. Now Rodrigue. Tillman now wide open. Up to Edwards, and the layup is no good. Oh, that's a rough one right there for the flight. Both teams right now are, are playing at maximum speed, and I don't think it's the one where they could be effective, and they've shown it. The, There's at least shot. five possessions in a row where uh, no one's a, a successful uh, scoring a basket. Dominique forced that shot at the top of the key, and it went out of bounds, so now it's Florida flight basketball. 
The Winter Park Storm lead by one now. I think there have been a couple lead changes in this game. It's been an overall even matchup between the two teams and hope to come better matchups now and uh, within the FBA season. Tillman's shot is good. Oh. Oh, but the ref called it away. So that looked like a, a late call. Was that on Tillman? I, I'm not sure. I do not know. But that was a very, that was a questionable call. I, I'm not sure exactly what it was on or who it was on. Coach, <laughs> head coach Mark King said, the devil is trying to get him. That's, that's how he responded to that foul call. As Douglas now dishes back out to the three. Here's Pickens. Or Barrington, I'm sorry. I think that's the first time we've seen him land a three. He's more of a uh, attack the basket type player. Tillman, his mid range is good. Tillman is just a, is a good basketball player. He's a really good, efficient player around the basket. Can defend pretty well. I like his game. He's, he's definitely fun to watch. Here's Bulb on the other end. Bob is no good, but Edwards gets the second rebound. It's no good, but foul now called. You know, that was a great play. And uh, the, the one I really appreciate is Dejon Edwards. So many times you see where someone's attacking the basket and, and everybody thinks, oh, we're going to make that layup. And Dejon Edwards followed that through. And after we missed it with, with Paul, we were able to actually collect it because of his energy. So Edwards uh, kept that alive and the reason they still have the ball right now. Unsung hero, for sure. Turnover there for the flight as Storm come down with it. That's a foul. Those are some young legs right there. That was some speed. He giselled his way over to the other coast. Edwards trying to keep up and fouled on the way. Again, when you have a foul to give like that, I think that's a, it's, it could be an appropriate time to foul. So you don't want to give the team the momentum of landing a fast break. Both free throws are good. Score is 62-58. It's the Storm now lead. See Back out that. to Tillman. His cross finds his lane, and it's good. Nice. Lovely mid-range there from Tillman. Some miscommunication, but the Winter Park Storm Maintain ball. Scissor in. Long range. And it's good. Kylo Williams with that long range. Edwards responds. No good. Oh, that's a tough, tough foul right there. Aaron Farrington is a uh, super fast player when he gets the ball. It just seems like uh, when he gets all the momentum going, that's a lot to control with and make decision making that's going to be effective for the storm. But uh, he comes up on that one because uh, you know, a lot of times, and this happens at a very high level with, with speed, is the refs they sit there and they can't see it as fast as they yes. it's happening. So they call mm -hmm. fouls. We see that a lot in today's game where like a foul won't be called because players are moving too fast or whatever it may be. And the butt end of that is foul or referees try to, they make makeup fouls, you yeah. know? And those are rough to, to continue on just because makeup fouls just, they, they just, they're usually on ticky tack fouls that usually, you know, questionable. So you need to be careful, especially as a referee, you know, dictating a game that's so close this far in 65-60. Yeah. Could be dangerous. Yeah. 
we'd like to uh, thank the official FBA DJ. Uh, who is who is our DJ today? Robert Robert Dietz. I think he's also job. our PA announcer. He brought his own speaker, so shout nice out to system. Mr. Dietz. He made he brought out his own speaker system. Shout out to him for uh, providing some music during our timeouts and during our pregames. A lot of feet are bouncing up in here. A lot of fans have got their uh, their feet moving. So this game, though there are only five teams currently in the FBA, only four make it to the playoffs. So you kind of just don't want to be that one team. That's kind of the goal, <laughs> is to not be that one team after the, uh, the last game of the season ends. We're back as number 43 takes his free throw, and it's good. Golik takes his first minutes back after a long deserved first. His bucket's good and I'm surprised there was no foul. A lot of hands flying, nothing called. Here's Dominique Douglas. Oh, and he called a travel. Nice play by Ignacio Padilla. Just uh, kind of pulling the chair out behind uh, Dominique Douglas, so he's got that travel call. Ooh. Rodriguez, first Awkward attempt is no good. Awkward step there. Tyler Rodriguez. Foul there. Kind of buckled his knee on that first move. It's a new face on the court for the Storm, number four, Alan Nelson. He did He did have a, a, a little cameo in the first half. I think he had a, he had a couple did he? hard fouls. Did he? Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Vaughn Knight is checked back in for the Storm. Again, we're here at the Silver Spurs Arena, the home of the Osceola Magic. Just about two and a half minutes left to play in the third quarter. Score 66 to 63. Not sure what happened there, but uh, it looked like that pass went right out of bounds from the storm. Here's Gullet now. Number 15, shot's no good. Oh. Florida Flight trying to uh, utilize their size there with a, a pick and roll with Gullet and Kapoor. Nice little lob pass, but uh, just not able to, to finish there. Here's Pickens. His shot is blocked by big man number 15. Here's Bulb on the other end. Gets fouled on the way. This is the, the beauty of the FBA where sometimes the possessions would just skyrocket. <laughs> yeah. And the, the pace will speed up dramatically. As we just saw about four possession, four changes in possession happen in about a minute. The ball hits his free throws. Florida flight kind of scraping back. Getting closer, just a one point deficit now. So they've. Uh, Allen. Shot's no good. That's a good look there for the Storm. 
moving the ball around for their team has been pretty helpful for their, uh, their success. Gollum. Oh. Gullet has the opportunity here to get the lead back. Heading into this uh, fourth quarter, just a, a minute and some change. Gullet hit his first free throw. I think he was coming off of an injury last season. So I didn't see much of him playing that I remember of. Yeah, Mark King said at halftime he's uh, he's probably about seventy five percent, and uh, you know he's he's getting better with it, but he's uh, he needs to continue with the rehab and getting it stronger. Nice off the glass lay right there for Tyler Williams, Rodriguez. Nice euro. Oh, lovely move there. And Pickens wasn't there in his normal spot for the dish and, sh and, sh and, sh and shot. I apologize. Pickens, the corner. No good. Uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, attempts for the, uh, the Herculean effort. Everybody wants to play by themselves yes. right now. And uh, again, as we close this out with the game so close, one of these teams is going to start to establish the, the momentum. Got about 13 seconds left in the shot. Score is tied, 68-68, as Dominic Douglas controls the ball and gets his ball stolen by a bulb on the other end. And the Florida oh. flight. Oh, Paul did a great job there on wow. defense. What an anticlimactic little end right there for the Winter Park Storm. Here's Nacho Badia. There you go. <laughs> Nacho Padilla. There's that momentum we're talking about. <laughs> and uh, I think it's right on time. What, what we're recognizing here is the Florida flight can definitely take a surge and getting the lead. Of course. But they can also create it where they can't protect the lead. And that's where I think where Mark King is going to focus in on saying, listen, we can score. We can score in, 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 in multiple ways, but we gotta do is we gotta protect our lead and defend. Yes. And on the other end, I see that uh, it's, it's, it's the opportunity, obviously do the opposite. We can't allow them to get ahead of us and keep chasing. Yes. And that means they gotta protect the ball. So uh, starting this uh, fourth quarter, we're gonna see, I think this is gonna be the moment where like it's going to be the definitive of the game. The yes. first three quarters, everything was so evenly matched up. Something has to bust. The here. better team is going to is going to break through for sure. Yeah. Score is only 73 to 68. <laughs> As the Florida Fly go up three, or grow up with a three, the last seconds of the third quarter. Just 12 more minutes of regulation left. Ball now back in. Nice drive, Pickens. Right away, Mark King uh, letting his team know, okay, that's the moment we gotta forget and we gotta move forward to the next play. 
And uh, I think that's a powerful statement uh, coming from the head coach. To say, look, we can't be just captured in this moment. If this this what occurred there, we got to say to ourselves, how do we prepare for the next one? Composure, composure, composure. It's always it's always about composure this late in the game, especially this close as well. Last thing you want to do is get emotional, yeah. start fouling. Chicken, chicken little. He didn't have composure. <laughs> he did not. <coughs> Trapped heavily at the corner. Here's Rodrigue. Dish back out. Padilla. Ball still with the flight. Oh. oh Should have had a wide open lane, but passed inside. Thought I, was, thought I was looking at the uh, 83 Celtics there moving the ball around. <laughs> I'm sorry to cut you off, but a nice steal and score by Rodrigue. Lovely hit there. Left wing, and it's good. Alan Nelson trying to get his team back on top, 75-73. That's an and one play. Vaughn Knight hit that foul. I like I like that look from Nacho, going in there and uh, finishing strong. <coughs> you know, one of the things I noticed with uh, Nacho is there's not many guys in the Florida flight that they run the offense from the right side of the floor going left. He's a very capable with both hands and, and driving. Nacho Badia, this is free throw, but. Got the rebound, and then hit a three right in the Storm's face. A lovely play there for the Florida Flight. Pick its way over. As we get uh, as we get into this fourth quarter and time's winding down, you can see that uh, there's a lot at stake. These guys are competitive; they want to win. There's a lot of jawing going on, a lot of exchange from the bench to players that are on the court. Here's Gullet. Good pass from Gullet. Nice play. I'm not a big fan of that. I, I call those cute passes. I'm not a big fan of. Uh, you know, trying to make little, little, little cute passes inside the lane. I'd rather have my bigs just take the shot, and try to draw the foul or score. The defense collapsed inside. Rodriguez almost gets the ball. Shot's no good, and the putback isn't either. Nacho. Padilla. Oh, you almost felt the momentum about to start there. Use all that inertia to get that yeah. flow going. Big fella. Kapoor, he's been, he's been kind of crafty around that, uh, that basket the last few possessions. Uh, there's some heavy hands there. I know uh, Paul does not like that. But uh, he definitely dropped a hammer down on those arms. For sure, I saw it from here. I know head coach of the Stormer is getting upset with the shot clock and equipment malfunction that's going on, which is, uh, it's fair. The ref and the uh, Florida Storm coach are having a little conversation here, like gentlemen talking about what a beautiful arena we're in. I know, I love this. I love this arena. I think, especially for um, for the Magic. Especially for the Magic, I love this arena. Joe, you, know, you got to realize too that these refs have to make a statement of saying, "Listen, we can't, we can't let this get out of hand." Yes. Uh, 
My hat's off to that ref for uh, just sitting here with his composure and just saying, hey, look, you know, we're not going to do it like this. We're going we're gonna to figure out a way that we can all work together. That's a turnover for the Storm. Yeah, and the flight are pulling away now with an 11-point lead. So the Storm's composure seems to be collapsing. Well, will Kapoor keep going with that magic? Uh, he kicks it out. Oh! Kapoor misses his shot, fighting for the rebound. Yeah, still got a hand on it. I like, I like it, the fighter keeping it alive. Good D right there, but Dominique Douglas finishes around the rim. A man finish right there. Going right up into the chest, got the high knee off the glass. Rodriguez misses the ball, and here's a wide open lane. You can't count them out just yet. The lead isn't that high. Here's Gollant. Kapoor, Kapoor using his size to get to his bucket. He knows the assignment. Yes, sir, he playing his job so well. Long range, no good. Call it on the floor. Tough play there. Farrington sets a, a legal screen, but uh, who, who is that Gullick? I think uh, Gullick just ran right into it with his face first. And, uh, Probably uh, got his nose smashed. Again, some miscommunication going on right now. Getting heated up in here. We're just under eight <laughs> minutes, and uh, Mark King and Brandon Parham uh, exchanging some words about uh, what's fair is fair. Douglas again getting to his free throw shot, trying to claw his way, his team, his teams back into the game. Timeout by the Winter Park Storm as the Florida flight lead by 86 to 78. You can see uh, this timeout, Mark, uh, Mark King has chosen to, uh, you know, use the the very beginning of it to talk to the refs and uh, very unhappy with the call gullet uh went in for a screen and from what i saw it looked like a legal screen he just didn't know it was there and he just ran right into his face and uh nobody likes to see any of the players get hurt but uh getting back to this action i think these two teams are uh you know, you're gonna see the efforts going up the focus going we, we talked about it. Where there was a lack of communication, there will be no more. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what they're talking about. Yeah. At the I beginning of the game, it was like the oxygen was sucked out of the room and no one could breathe because exactly. they couldn't talk. Now, all of a sudden, everybody's just uh, heightened alert on everything and, and trying to say everything. This is still a game. It's still a game. The Winter Park Storm are still in the game, trying to make sure that they can get back in it. I think their best bet Make some shots for for uh, number zero, Braylon Pickens. I think maybe he hits one or two threes, gets some momentum in for the storm, flight. Yeah, I think uh, their go-to is uh, is going to be Douglas, of course, trying to draw those fouls, driving, and uh, you know, kind of the supporting role to see those guys who fill in and do what they do. And if, if we see uh, Pickens come in, you know, you gonna see again. And what I talked about earlier, getting in that negative space like the corner and getting those uh, three-point shots. Just a seven-point game as the flight lead by 86 to 79. 
It's about seven and a half minutes left of regulation. Padilla, no good. It's a good wide open look though for the flight. Like a wheel action there for uh, the Florida flight. Suck up now getting his first minutes of the fourth. Oh. Long range, Almost no a good. Similar play uh, there for uh, the Storm setting those uh, screens up top and the handoffs. Call it now. Gullet, his fade away is good. What a jumper right there from Grant Gullet. Joe, you know what's funny is uh, Gullet actually had a better position before he let the ball yes, out. Yes, he did. He was like almost saying, hey, give me a more challenging space. To yeah, I this guess thing. so. Oh, a corner three by Dominique Douglas to respond. 88 to 82. There you go. Yeah, that's a tough foul. That's a, that's a good foul. It's a good call. It's a good call. This is when speed works in your favor. Padilla, you know, recognizing even though he's at a disadvantage, he's on the fast break, he's going up against two defenders. Just turn the go go juice on, get the gas going, and go right into him. Padilla. His first free throw as Clarence Tillman checks back in. Padilla makes his second. 90 to 82 with an eight point lead. The Winter Park Storm are looking to come back. Just about six and a half minutes left. Ball oh, slipped goodness. out of the hands. Here comes Douglas, blocked. Storm still have the ball. Back out to the corner, here's Dominique. And he hits it. Ninety-one, eighty-five. 85 Padilla. And he's good. The ref giving a uh, storm bench a warning there about some of the commentary. Well, this is FBA basketball. There's uh, a lot on the line, even in the uh, early part of the season. You know, a lot of these guys, you know, they, they invest so much into this, especially even on this Saturday. They got family, friends coming in here and uh, they want to put together their best efforts. And they want to make sure that they're getting a, a fair run in. Douglas lets it fly. No good. Tillman. Tillman guarded heavily. No good. Pass intercepted. Yo, and one for Grant Gullet right under the basket. What a good play by Gullet. I feel like that was a very mature move. He knew he was gonna get fouled, drive, in so, drive inside. The steal was impressive. As, you know, after Tillman looked to make that shot and missed, Storm come with the rebound, try to make a fast pass to, to start their break, but, but Gullet's long arm just grabbed that thing and there he is uh, going then and showing his uh, showcase of, of his offensive ability scoring here's Smith now in his first minutes of the fourth uh, not a big fan of this ball Paul makes a dive and he is not in the momentum of going into the offensive storm guy he's just creating a, an obstacle but uh, the storm guy trips over him and, but Paul gets the call I'm not a fan of that Ivan Smith directing his traffic. Here's Douglas, the leader of the team. Ivan Smith takes his shot, no good. Here 
There's Gullet. Finds his man. The shooter no good. It's a rebound Florida Flight. Oh. That's a foul. Gullet's everywhere. It's like he morphed. It's like more, more got morphed from being at the three-point line to being under the basket. Yes. There. I didn't even know that was him that came up with that rebound. It's did a great job. What do you make of what's happening here on the uh, timetable with the coaches? Yeah, I mean, it's almost hard to hear myself think. There's so <laughs> much going on. It's like I'm I'm listening to this side, the flight, you know, yell and scream about the foul. I'm listening to the Winter Park Storm. Yell about the clock. I mean, granted, the clock should be correct. Yeah. I, 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 there is, there are rules, and if if it gets reset to the wrong number, or if it, you know, whatever it may be, I, <laughs> I feel for, for his frustration, but I don't feel like that should be your number one, uh -oh. I guess, priority right now. Yeah. There is a game to play. It's 95-85. Your team's down 10. Well, you know, I'm the youngest of six, so. Uh, there was a lot of chaos when uh, <laughs> somebody ate all the Rice Krispies or... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Again, props to Golet for really going out there and just taking a beating. Every time he steps into that paint, he's getting banged or hit by, from, from another body. That's a kickball violation against the flight. Wow. What a nice putback right yeah. there for the storm. Terrell Christian extending that arm. Nice touch around the basket. There's a lot of control there. Gullet takes oh. his long. Oh. Big smile there on Gullet. And that, not normally one of the shots that he takes is three. He, he does shoot threes, but. Uh, Known for his drives and finishing under the basket. An open, an open look is always a good look. Douglas hit that too. Correct the clock. Uh, you know, I like uh, I like that play by Dominique Douglas because I think. You know he's he's one of their more capable scorers, and uh, he needs to he needs to take an authority of getting those shots up. Got some more confusion going on with the equipment, but ball now back in. Here's Bulb. Double teamed. Flight still have the ball. Now the winner Park gets stripped on the way. What a lovely defensive play by Padilla. Here's Bulb trying to slow things down for the flight. This fadeaway is no good. Stuck up with that rebound. Oh, foul right there. It's a foul. Don't, don't understand that play right there from uh, Paul. You're up. You're up seven points. You just got to protect the lead. Yes. And uh, he gets a call for a foul in the backcourt there. Now, if it's one to get rest, I understand it. You get a breather. Douglas gets a hand one play. Wow. Took his pull-up jumper and got fouled on the way up, so now he has a chance to complete the three-point play. Lucas, you and I said this in the beginning <laughs> of the second half. We said, here's, here's, here's what we're looking at. The Florida flight 
are capable to score, but are they capable to keep their lead? Yes. And we're seeing it right now. And it's playing out here in this last two minutes and 33 seconds. You know, they got a five point lead and that's a, that's a lot. Storm is at the line. Now a four. Four point lead. I think right now, keep the ball moving up as much as possible for the flight and they should be okay. Again, a lot of bodies, a lot of physicality going on right now. Edwards at the corner and he stepped oh, out. Goodness. I don't understand that play with Tillman. Tillman has got to be about 6'5". He's driving to the basket and he's going to make a pass, a bounce pass to Paul who might be 5'10". Yes. Like, that just, to me has, just doesn't, doesn't make sense. Especially at this time in the game. Back out. Shot's no good. Four, just point, under. four point lead. Just Everything for minutes. the uh, Florida flight right now is just it's all about decision making. And uh, is it is a unified team decision making or is it each individual making up a decision? Padilla, there he is. There he is. Nacho Padilla with a nice floater to make his team go up six. In a minute and a half left. Ivan Smith now. Long range is no good. Oh, goodness. Call against the flight this late in. Terrell Christian did a great job. Is uh, This is a strategy. Is Whenever you have a shot coming from the corner, percentages and stats say that the ball is going to go to the other side. Yes. And if you're, if you're on the defensive side of it, the opposite, you just pin the man inside and don't jump the first time and that's what he did and he actually the ball just was collected in his hand and here he is yep. the free first free throw is no good oh, a lot of pressure here here's a shooter checking in for the flight Tyler Rodriguez a lot of clock left yep. Yep. second free throw is no good those are some crucial free throws for the storm Tillman lost his ball. Here's suck up. That's your guy right there. That's what I'm telling you. He's just a good player. Yeah. <laughs> you ever see the movie Moneyball? I have. The there's, just, hit. there's players in there that uh, they just don't fit the mold, but they're effective. And yes. That's what you see in uh, in suck up. Some more shot clock issues as we near the end of regulation. Score is 98 to 94 as the flight lead by only four. If, uh, if that shot clock was bought on Amazon, we got to see what some of the customer replies were on it. Uh, yes. <laughs> Here's Bulb now directing traffic. Ten seconds left. Gallo wants his shot. Takes his long range. No good. Oh. Back in now. The Storm get an and one play. I'm um, I'm shocked at that Florida flight offense at the end. There, you know the ball's going to go it, but it, there's it's not. It's not, there's no plan to it. It's just getting the ball as if yeah. he's going to save everything. Remember how I think it was earlier this game how I said I think the difference between a good coach and a great coach is when they call timeouts? Yeah. I think you call a timeout right now. You're only up one point now with about 40 seconds left. Last thing that you want to do is give the ball up on a, on a turnover. I agree. I think that we said it you know, best with this, the idea is Florida Flight can score. Your your timeout is really your timeout is really to regain your focus like that. You 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 pick five guys that are out there. Now you got to make sure that they're clear headed enough to realize we got to take care of the ball. They call the travel against Rodriguez, and the Winter Park Storm calls timeout. A 
again, 98-97 as a fly only lead by one, one point, I'm sorry. Just about 35 seconds left in regulation. And the referees are blowing their whistle left and right at the end of this. It's anybody's game at this point. It's anybody's I so. game. I think so. And it all goes down to, this is going to sound funny, but uh, the culture you've created inside of your club. So when I'm watching this, every guy looks like they're intently listening, but are they actually taking everything in as the assignment? And that's where when they come out of this huddle, do they go on their own accord and make decisions, or do they stay focused on what the coach is saying for the team? Because if it is they stay with the coach, they can correct that. But you, it's very easy also to see when someone's just doing what they want to do themselves. Florida flight going in this. they got a one-point lead, and there's a lot of time on the clock, 35 seconds. I'm eager to see what happens. I'm very... Uh... I don't want to get my crystal ball out. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> yes. I have a prediction. But a, I'm going to rub the magic lamp and make my uh, my wish in a second. I just don't want to see anybody pointing fingers yes. outwardly. And again, I know the flight are pretty upset with, with some referee calls. That's a tough foul for the flight. That call is going to be on the floor. Ivan Smith got sent to the free throw line after a foul by Tyler Rodriguez. Looks like we're in the bonus. I didn't even realize that. With this. Yeah, that's a rough place to be in right now if you're the flight. Only up one point. Got an appointed opponent. At the free throw. First shot is good as up. he ties the game. 98-98. I love I love these moments. I love these two when they do this in practice. It's just called situational. Yes. So you gotta make sure that you're ready for this. Whether he goes up one or it stays tied, we're gonna see what's gonna what's going on and how they protect. The second free throw is good, as now the Storm lead by one with just 27 seconds left. The oh, Mark King calling stolen. a timeout. It wasn't, wasn't checked. Florida Flight are losing their composure. Yeah. Ivan Smith There's got still a lot back. of game left. Now up by up by two. Up by that's three. a second free throw. Clarence Tillman now trapped. Tillman got two guys on him. Here's Bulb. Oh, That's wow. Winter Park Storm Ball. Looks like, uh, yeah, Paul just, he was out of bounds when he jumped. I thought at first that maybe he was in the air and brought it back in, but it looks like he jumped from out of bounds to get his hand. Mark King calling a timeout. We come back. It's still going to be Storm's Ball. This is the situation I've been waiting for. Now look, we said if they're up, they have challenges with getting with, with staying up. <laughs> now they're behind, but they are capable scorers, and now they've got a defensive possession to go. Mark King is going to get a challenge here early on in this season. He's got to coach these guys on a great defensive possession. Yes. And then I don't even know how many how many timeouts they have left. But if they get that ball, they're still going to have an opportunity to come back. This is so, this is something. This is what you live and breathe for. This moment right here. 
you see some Osceola Magic people coming out to, yeah. to watch. Kevon Harris right there on the sideline. I think that's the, uh, the coach for the uh, Osceola Magic. Is that? Is it? Where is the coach? Is that him right there? I think that's the assistant. Okay. But they look identical. They're both bald with the, with the beard. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's just 16 seconds left. Foul right away. Foul yeah. right away. Lots of clock there. It's a good strategy there. You, know, you want to put it back in your hands. So if they if they don't have enough time, they don't have enough opportunity. So they're going to send them back to the free throw line. And uh, okay, he's shooting two. So we get, <laughs> I, was, I didn't know if it was a one on one or it was a two. So a lot, Bulb, a lot of chatter. Bulb is chin chatting with another another player on the sideline. Those two free throws are good. We got a timeout called by the Florida Flames. 103 to 98. I don't even know what to say. Uh, I don't either. There's, there is nothing to say. You just have to watch. One of the things that I, I learned first, I think it was my very first lecture in this class I take at UCF, uh, sports reporting. Shout out Professor Adelson. Love his classes. But one of the very first things we learned was uh, how it's good to have space in your broadcast. And it's good to, like, not talk and just let the moment play out. <laughs> I like that. Like, we are, we are not... You and I are not the main focus. This, the game is, and yeah. and if there is nothing to say, then there's nothing to say. There's no reason to, to interject. That's a so great I'm, point. I'm just gonna let this roll out, and uh, I'll comment after. <laughs> I'm, I'm too invested right now. It's 103 to 98. Winter Park Storm came back after a tough detriment. Now they're up five. 14 and a half seconds left with flight ball. Ball now in. Right under basket, there you go, there's Tillman. Ball now in. Fouled Ivan Smith once again, and, and I think they're feeding Smith that ball because he's been to the foul line probably at least three times so far, and he's hit probably most of his, of his shots. So definitely a good offensive scheme there for the Storm. Probably the best too in that full court for uh, breaking the press or the pressure. Yes. But uh, I tell you, there's a slow finger on that clock that I noticed. Uh, yes. That's one of the things about minor minor league is uh, they don't have the uh, the technology with cameras to go back and see you know when did his hand catch the mm -hmm. ball, when did the foul occur. Mm -hmm. So the clock is the clock. Second one's no good. Flight only up. Yeah. That's wow. the game. That is the game, ladies and gentlemen. The score, 104 to 100 as the Winter Park Storm fly away. Raining on the flights parade. Wow. Well, I enjoyed it. I know that uh, we're early in the season. And uh, these are going to continue, and hopefully the, these two teams learn from this, and uh, the excitement keeps continuing in the season as we move forward. What a game. What a game. Thank you guys so much for joining us here at the Silver Spurs Arena. My name is Lucas Miller. I'm joined with Mr. Pat Burke, and we'll, we'll see you guys at the next Florida Basketball Association game on April 20th. We'll see you guys later. Have a good night.
Bible. Yeah. 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 Yeah.